What's up guys, Chigs there from Chigs Tech Reviews. So today I bring you a head to head comparison between the all new third generation Fire TV Stick versus the new Fire TV Stick Lite. So these are Amazon's latest Fire TV sticks. And in this video, I will be showing you the differences between them. So we have the standard version, $39.99, and the light version for $29.99. So first of all, let's compare the contents. So here are the contents of both Fire TV sticks. We've got the light on this side, and we've got the standard version on this side. So more or less exactly the same accessories. So user manual, micro USB charging, a five watt USB wall charger, two AAA batteries, an HDMI extension, remote control and the Fire TV sticks themselves. Now the standard model comes with the second gen Alexa voice remote included and the light version has the Alexa voice remote light included. So side by side you can see how they fare. Means the standard version can control your TV functions like volume, mute and power whereas the light version does not support TV control. But fortunately both are still Alexa voice remotes they are powered by two AAA batteries, which I included, and they are Bluetooth remotes. So you're gonna get the best connectivity possible. Okay, so quick look at the Fire TV sticks. So both Fire TV sticks are identical. They have a micro USB port on the side for power, HDMI on the front, and that is pretty much it. So no other ports. Um, there is nothing to differentiate which one is light and which one is standard. Even all the writing on the back is the same, including the model numbers. So not much separating the physical appearance of this product. Now let's check out the specs. Now both of these Fire TV sticks have exactly the same chipset. So both have a quad core 1.7 gigahertz processor with the PowerVR GE8300 graphics. Now I'm not sure about the RAM at this stage, but you should see the RAM information for both models on the screen. Now both have eight gigs of internal storage with dual band Wi-Fi and dual antennas. Both support HDMI version 2.0B and both run the latest version of Fire TV OS. Now here are the differences. The standard model has a second gen Alexa voice remote included and the light version has an Alexa voice remote light included. Also, both Fire TV sticks support a maximum 1080p streaming with HDR10, but the standard version supports Dolby Atmos sound, whereas the light version supports Dolby Digital. Both TV sticks support HDR10 and HLG. So the decision simply comes down to what level of sound you want. If you want Atmos, then grab the standard version for $39.99. If you don't have a Dolby Atmos system at home, and you're not too bothered about Atmos, then go ahead and grab the light version for only $29.99. You're still gonna get the same resolution, same power, and same performance in both of these TV sticks. So how powerful are these new Fire TV sticks? Well, they are actually 50% more powerful than the previous gen 1080p Fire TV sticks, which means faster uploading times, smoother video streaming with less buffering and stuttering issues. Now, Amazon has actually done something quite impressive these two new Fire TV sticks have exactly the same chipset as the 4K Fire TV stick. So you're getting the same power and performance in all three current Fire TV stick models. Now that is what I call impressive. So performance and streaming quality is the same on both sticks. So you can expect a maximum of 1080p supporting HDR on YouTube. It looks nice and smooth with no buffering issues. Netflix is also 1080p and the same on Amazon Prime. So the only difference will be the audio support depending on which stick you go for. So official 1080p from all apps, including Disney Plus. Now let's move on to the gaming test and we are gonna be testing out Asphalt 8. So I did download and test this game out on both Fire Sticks and it was a very smooth experience. Graphics were automatically set on medium and I was able to play a smooth game of Asphalt using the Fire Stick remote and it was a great experience. Yes, you can still sideload all your favorite apps using Sectors Play and the overall experience does seem noticeably faster and smoother. Time for some system info and benchmarks. Well, DRM info shows Google Widevine level one. 
ADA64 confirms the one gig of RAM. In the Wi-Fi speed test, we achieved 52 megabits per second download and upload speeds of 18 megabits per second. So this is typically the top speed I achieve in my office. Now internal storage speeds were more or less the same for both devices. We got around 248 megabytes per second read and 40 megabytes per second write. And finally on Geekbench version four, which is the only version that would work on this Fire TV stick, we achieved around 2087. So let's see how that compares with the others. So that brings me to my top performing Android TV box chart of 2020, where all devices have been ranked by benchmark scores. And you can see that both new Fire TV sticks have taken position 15 and 16 on this chart based on its performance. And you can view the full versions of all my charts online at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure. So there you have it guys, both new Fire TV sticks compared, tested and reviewed on the channel within seven minutes. That has to be a new record on this subject. Now my thoughts are you're getting great value for money, licensed 1080p streaming on all top streaming apps. That means YouTube, Netflix, Prime, Disney and many others. If you want an easy to use smart TV solution, Amazon has actually done us a favor by introducing two new affordable Fire TV sticks, which has the same power and performance as their top end 4K TV stick. In fact, the internal storage read speeds were actually faster than the 4K TV stick models. So overall, super bang for your buck and a very simple choice to make. Do you want TV control and Atmos? Then go for the standard $39.99 Fire TV stick. If you don't care for Atmos or TV control, then the $29.99 Lite version could be the one for you. Now I've tested both sticks and they give exactly the same performance. If you already own a second gen Amazon Alexa voice remote, then you can actually use that on the Lite version and gain all the TV control functions. Now the only thing the Lite version won't give you is the Atmos support. So kudos to Amazon for releasing some powerful TV sticks. Even if they are only 1080p, I personally have no problem watching Netflix at 1080p, especially for that starting price of $29.99. Now with that being said, I will leave the links in the description box below so you guys can check it out for yourselves. Meanwhile, thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have an amazing day. I'll see you guys in the next one.